greetings this Thursday morning, the first week of Advent. We gather this morning in prayer. Uh, my name is Ken Pepin, and I'm the rector here at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Fairport, New York. And we're glad to come and to share with you today in this time of prayer. So let us begin. Arise, O Jerusalem, stand upon the height, and look toward the east, and see your children gathered from west and east at the word of the Holy One. O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the Holy and Undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. O God, be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of your countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the people with equity and guide all nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm chosen for today is Psalm 18, or a portion of it, beginning at the first verse. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my stronghold, my crag, and my haven. My God, my rock, in whom I put my trust. My shield, the horn of my salvation, and my refuge. You are worthy of praise. I will call upon the Lord, and so shall I be saved from my enemies. The breakers of death rolled over me, and the torrents of oblivion made me afraid. The cords of hell entangled me, and the snares of death were sent to me. I called upon the Lord in my distress, and cried out to my God for help. He heard my voice from his heavenly dwelling, and my cry of anguish came to his ears. The earth reeled and rocked. The roots of the mountain shook and reeled because of his anger. Smoke rose from his nostrils and a consuming fire out of his mouth. Hot burning coals blazed forth from him. He parted the heavens and came down with a storm cloud under his feet. He mounted on the cherubim and flew. He swooped on the wings of the wind. He wrapped darkness about him. He made dark waters and thick clouds his pavilion from the brightness of his presence. Through the clouds burst hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord thundered out of heaven. The Most High uttered his voice. He loosed his arrows and scattered them. He hurled thunderbolts and routed them. The beds of the sea were uncovered and the foundations of the world laid bare at your battle cry, O Lord, at the blast to the breath of your nostrils. He reached down from on high and grasped me. He drew me out of the great waters. He delivered me from my strong enemies and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They comforted, they confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into an open place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Our scripture chosen for today is taken from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, uh, chapter 3. Therefore, when we could bear it no longer, we decided to left alone in Athens. And we sent Timothy, our brother and co-worker for God, in proclaiming the gospel of Christ to strengthen and encourage you for the sake of your faith, so that no one would be shaken by those, these persecutions. 
Indeed, you yourselves know that this is what we are destined for. In fact, when we were with you, we told you beforehand that we were to suffer persecutions. So it turned out as you know. For this reason, when I could bear it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith. I was afraid that somehow the tempter had tempted you and that our labor had been in vain. But Timothy has just now come to us from you and has brought us the good news of your faith and love. He has told us that you always remember us kindly and long to see us just as we long to see you. For this reason, brothers and sisters, during all our distress and persecution, we have been encouraged about you through your faith. For we now live, if you continue to stand firm in the Lord, how can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see your face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you and may the Lord make you increase in abounded love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Scripture reveals for us the, uh, the depth of our faith, the, the incredible strength of, of following a faith life, a belief that God is with us even in the midst of persecution, even in our tough times. And most of us can recognize those challenging times are all around us. These would be classified as, as very difficult times and a certain kind of persecution, obviously not the kind that the early communities of the church suffered, but we have our own persecutions of this pandemic and the disease it's brought about and the discomfort and the suffering and the death that this has brought to us. And yet, um, I, I, I understand and feel um, that, that complete surprise and joy at hearing of people holding on to their faith despite the suffering. Holding on to their faith, um, increasing their love for each other. Um, it's boundless. It's an incredible thing to witness. Uh, people stepping up in the midst of crisis. And um, I Obviously, um, in ministry, applaud such actions. I think they are a wonderful testimony of that true faith we talked about. Um, the psalmist this morning brought it out so clearly that you know it, he sought God's assistance in the midst of what he was experiencing as a complete crisis, where everything was folding in on him and all of his enemies and everybody was there and and he was caught in this whole vicious storm and yet recognized the power of God to work through that storm and to embrace him and grasp him out of the pit of hell. <laughs> I hope and pray we have that depth of faith um, present in our own lives, that ability to recognize that gift of God that grace of God that motivates us and strengthens us and gives us um, the ability to handle the persecutions that come our way. So we turn in faith and in prayer uh, to our God as we consider our neighbors, consider those who, are, uh, who share in this faith with us. So let us pray for our leaders, our faith leaders in our lives, people who encourage us and strengthen us in this road of faith. We pray for the leaders of all nations and 
those who have authority, that again, that they are humble enough to engage in their own faith, their own strength, um, their own path to God's strength in their life. We pray for our communities, pray for all who live in them. We pray especially for those who are deprived of housing and don't seem to have a place to call home, um, those who are living in shelters or on the streets of our communities. We pray for the aged and the infirm, for the widowed and the orphans, for the sick and the suffering. We pray for all health workers in our in our health facilities, whether it be hospitals or nursing homes or care facilities for those most vulnerable to this pandemic, for the poor, the oppressed, the unemployed, and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and all who remember and care for them. And we pray for all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, for all the departed, for all those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, for deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, for the absolution and remission of our sins and our offenses and brokenness. We pray that we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering, without reproach. Defend us and deliver us in your compassion and protect us, O God, by your grace. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Help us, O God, our Savior. Deliver and forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation Give to your people the blessing of peace. Declare your glory among the nations and your wonders among all people. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we could ever ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. So may God's blessing fill you this day with the grace of faith to stand to stand up strong with strength against all the things that may uh, rob us of that freedom. We ask for God's blessing to fill you with grace, to bless you with faith and perseverance. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Continue to have a good week. We'll see you on Monday.